Hi, my name is Keenan. My name's Steve. And this is Saving Lives with Drones. Well, Steve, we're at episode number 11. We're just cruising along. Yeah, we are definitely cruising along. Uh, Before we go ahead and get started, let's talk a little bit about Sky Arrow Imagery Services, our sponsor. Uh, They're always helping to pay the bills, and, you know, they provide uh, services for photography, videography, uh, general sensor capture for pretty much uh, all industries, mapping, uh, film, uh, they do some real estate work as well, agriculture work, so we're glad that they're um, helping us. They actually have just started getting a little bit into public safety where they, they nice. can assist public safety agencies for more advanced level drones than what uh, some agencies would necessarily have at the very beginning. So you know, a lot of agencies will get like that Bantam or maybe like a Mavic Pro to kind of start off with you know, due to funding and whatnot. And they can uh, go ahead and work with uh, Skyor in order to have the more advanced level drones for when they need that type of support, like kind of more the obscure things like the the larger Matrice 600s or a thermal imaging camera or th- things of that nature, at least until the agency gets their own ball rolling. And Skyro also helped that agency as well in getting, um, helping them get their UAS program uh, moving along too. So again, Very we're thankful, cool. uh, we're thankful for their uh, support. And uh, let's see, what are we going to talk about today, Steve? Well, we're, here we are in uh, episode 11, and I um, was just wondering if you've seen any or heard about any good recent uh, footage of uh, drones uh, at fires recently. Well, you know, there's one that comes to mind from a couple months ago um, that I thought was a really good um, footage, and then I found out how it got filmed. And so what had happened was there was a guy and his family, and they saw, he saw a column of smoke, and he kind of used his little um, pair of beep op and kind of flew it out there. And he found a, um, it was a marina fire, and it was about two or three boats that were fully involved. Wow. You know, after talking with him, because at the time he didn't really realize, you know, he thought he was being out of the way and whatnot and didn't really realize the, the hazard was. And he wasn't flying over people or anything like that. He was definitely um, staying out of the way. But just being that close to the response scene and the fact that the incident commander didn't know about it, but he didn't know to talk to the incident commander either. So it was, it was after talking with him, you know, he wasn't trying to be, you know, malicious or anything like that. He just didn't know. And, you know, after talking, he agreed saying, yeah, you know, next time at least I'll let the incident commander know saying, hey, I got this aerial footage. Do you want to take a look at my screen while I'm, I'm doing it? And you can, if he says no and land, you know, He'd land type of thing, right? Sure. But uh, beyond that, that aside, I thought this footage was really good because it really kind of gave a different perspective. And not saying that Instant Command would have done something um, different, but it kind of gave a different perspective of how the fire was attacked because there was you can only basically attack it from the dock or from the water, and they did it from both, both angles. But uh, just being able to have that aerial view, and when you see this footage, I think you'll agree that... Um, that uh, it, it definitely would give a lot more information to this command. So why don't sure. we go ahead and uh, take, take a look at it. Yeah, and, definitely. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, kind of comment on it a little bit, and then uh, we'll snap back, all right? This is actually in Everett, Washington, okay. uh, where this occurred. And uh, what we're seeing here is the approach from the BPOP. First responders are not currently on scene right now. And, you know, as you can see, you know, at this the, point, the, it's rolling pretty the, good. Yeah, it's rolling pretty good. You can definitely see, uh, I mean, the pilot was definitely trying to stay as best he could, like, away from it. I mean, away from the scene itself. Right. First uh, firefighter's getting there, and he's masking up. Sure. Um, out there. And what what's interesting, you see, on the left-hand side, you can see actually what looks like one of the boats have already left the dock. Like, um, looks like it yep, kind of got away detached. from it. Detached. Detached. And it's just kind of sitting there. And it looks from here that there's actually three different boats. So... Now the guy goes and pulls up, and you got to think, that's like, that could be five, 600 feet, 700 feet of a line you've got to drag to and get to it. that's the only way to attack it, either on that short boardwalk or somehow in the water. Yeah, ab- absolutely, and it's just, and you can see actually it's a total of, I believe it's four boats, and the one boat that we saw that kind of came out was the fourth one that was kind of in right. between the one left and the... And if you look on the right side there... Uh, Looks like they got some exposures since these boats are real close. Oh yeah, they got they got extreme exposures, and what and we'll see is a little bit fall over. We can already. see we can see these guys over here in the um, in the corner over here are already trying to figure out how to uh, get that boat unattached so they can get that exposure out of there. It's a great perspective. From... It's it's definitely a different perspective because you think about you're on the ground. The only thing you're probably seeing right now is a wall of smoke. 
right. and a little bit of orange. And you and you may not even know what's actually burning on the other side right now that you know that there's actually four boats on fire. The only person that knows this right now is the pilot in the air. And where's the pilot at? Um, um, the pilot's actually over, uh, he's over in, on the, the grass here at the beginning of the docks. Okay. I think at this time they got, I think they got the hose dragged up there, but I mean it. Yep, looks like they're pulling it up there right now. But I mean, that's that's a lot of hose to drag. Oh yeah, it is. And then, I mean, for this, I mean, you need two and a half inch water. And I think, I think I saw an inch and three quarter, but honestly, how are you going to drag six, seven hundred feet and maneuver that on such a tight platform? Right. You know, and, and maybe what you need to focus on is uh, just protecting exposures. You can see the lo- small explosions. Yeah, you can definitely. We saw a few small explosions already, just that one just right there. And um, The best bet at this point, I mean, all those boats that are burning are total loss. Yep. Try to get those exposures away. And and that's what you see them doing right there. You can see them pulling yeah. out that one boat. You just saw that they threw out the mooring lines. And they're getting, starting to get some water, you know, on that initial. But again... The, they're again the wind's kind of going in the wrong direction and um, going towards them. Towards yep. them. Now you're seeing oh. a stream coming from the water, and this is actually a uh, fireboat. Really? Okay. Um, that's approaching. I think. Well, we'll we'll go ahead and watch it, but you know they'll start getting some water onto it itself. Um, Looks like he needs to get a little closer. There yeah, he. he d- they definitely need to uh, get a little closer and. They kind of get in there. So you can see they're getting that one boat out, out of there. And uh, we'll see in a little bit. We'll see some civilians on the other docks on the other side, you know, trying to assist and trying to move, uh, get, like, uh, throw these moorings over. But at least, you know, they can try to protect um, uh, some of these boats. And this is, you know, you think this is going to be relatively easy to knock out. Just wait. A it, lot of fuel. There's a lot of fuel burning. And I didn't had no idea that boats burnt so well but um, right no i never knew that either it's uh, but it's uh it's kind of a lot um, more combustibles than i thought yeah it, it could be just the uh, materials that they are that they're made out of um, plastics and whatnot so and and the thing from the aerial perspective you see that crew that's you know shooting that water across and you have to wonder can they really see what they're actually hitting and then if you're if you're actually looking at the from the fireboats perspective you know there's they have a little bit better perspective but they don't know how deep it goes because they can just see this boat on the left, this boat off to the side. But do they sure. know that there's actually two others that are involved in this f- fire uh, as well? And from experience, like you mentioned earlier, uh, especially the guys on the dock, all you see is a whole bunch of smoke coming at you. you know, uh, and you're just kind of aiming, lobbing water over on it and hoping and, and, that and, and, it's and, getting and, it. And you're hoping – and how many times has this happened to us on a structure fire? Right. right? The same exact thing um, occurs where, you know, we're – Thinking that we're hitting it, and and it, it takes someone else that maybe is, you know like uh, usually in this commander saying, "Oh, you're," you know, or the uh, safety officer said, "Oh, you're tossing the water over over the structure. You need to lower the holes, even though you can't see anything. Cause you got water spraying back at you, and you know it's 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 rough." And it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely easier said than done. It's right. So what we're going to see is the boat's going to go away for a minute, as if memory serves, and it's going to kind of reposition itself. Um, and then uh, cont- continue its uh, continue its attack. So, the one thing that I think having the aerial perspective here could do is actually help keeping um, the crews safe on both sides is to ha- be able to help instruct because you can see where the water where they're starting to get some oversplash and starting to hit the guys. Starting to hit their own guys, right? And you know I, this happens all the time, right, on the fire scene. But being on such a small platform, you know, if something were to happen and they were to, you know, get hit and just slip. You know, and then suddenly in the water, then you got to deal with trying to, you know, drag them out of the water as well. So I think having the aerial perspective, you can help direct um, the fireboat and its stream while the guys with the, um, uh, that are on the uh, dock can, you know, focus on protecting the the exposures sure. and tackling what little bits that they can. Because obviously the fireboat's throwing way more uh, water onto the, uh, uh, onto the scene. And could you imagine, tr- you know... I, I've piloted a boat a few times, just trying to keep that boat steady. Right. And, you know, and... It looks like it's a straight stream. It looks like you can't turn that nozzle on well, that Well, but think about that straight stream is also producing pressure. That's going to push the boat back. So you yeah. actually have to run the engines. I don't know. Maybe, the, maybe these boats are slick enough where they can tell how much pressure is pushing out and they know how to run the engines. I don't know. But um, it's definitely very, very, uh, um, very interesting. And this footage is so valuable, 
especially after now oh. they know for oh. training purposes. For training purposes, but even I mean, this is to me this is one of the, the key core examples when you have a structure. And there's not a lot of when you think of ground footage that's on fire, but you do have a lot of intense fire, a lot of intense smoke. Yep. And you're attacking it from two different angles and you know, you have a lot of hazards. One of the, the big one being water on both sides. Right. And you only have a very tiny platform to work off of. I mean, look at the it's number unique. of people that you have working on on this uh, the dock. You know, being an incident commander and being able to see this, I might say, hey, some of these guys that aren't critical might pull them off maybe, uh, depending on what they're doing, because we can't really see what they're doing from here. But sure. the incident commander would, would know that. And just being able to have this um, perspective and being able to say, hey, you know, um, this is what we're doing. So you can see they pushed off this boat, and uh, you can see these. Uh, these are. I'm assuming these are civilians just that are right here. You know, they're trying to throw a, a line to it so they can go ahead and pull and, and tie off the boat over at uh, these ends of the docks. And and you don't get marina fires that often. At not least that I, I know I, of. I, yeah, it's not I, as common. I never as a, as a structure fire. I've never heard this. I mean, this to me. From a hazard standpoint, would be really intense. You oh, got yeah. a lot of heat. It looks like you have a lot of heat. You have a lot of smoke. And you don't have much to work from. You know, you've got the dock, and it kind of ends there. And you know, how many times have you been pushed back by uh, uh, by holes? I know. Does that look like inch and see, does that look like inch and three quarter on the dock there? Maybe it's a one inch and three quarter. The others are two and a half. Yeah. I'm not sure, but um, it's you know, I'm not a really great judge, uh, especially from this perspective, but. Um, you know, it's it, it's it's a lot of work, and you have to that little bit of space. You have a little bit of pressure, and there's very little room for for error that can occur. And that's something that it's just one of those things that you have to you have to try to wa uh, watch out for. And then you can see that it looks like the crew over here um, that's on the far end by the fireboat looks like they're going to start to try to move that boat away, get that exposure um, out of the area. Correct. And again. You, you know, these guys are just kind of putting the wet stuff on the red stuff, and they're, they're just doing the best that they can to, to aim. Um, you got another firefighter down here, looks like, to the left, trying to hold that boat. Well, yeah, so that firefighter was actually on the boat. Okay. And now what, what's going to be horrible for him is that he's going to have to walk all the way down the dock right. and come <laughs> all the way back, but he's tying that boat off over there. And now that the fireboat, and it could be very reason why the fireboat pulled away was to allow that boat to for them to uh, maneuver it. So fireboat's going to go out of um, out of can uh, uh, picture here, and we'll, we'll see it. Um... And this is just, you know, one small incident. You right. Know, take this, this could be a brush fire, a structure fire, a natural disaster, and, and to get a perspective from this high, I, I don't know how high do you think he is right now. I'm, I'm, well, looking at the the masts, I'm going to guess maybe 150 feet. Yeah, and that's and that's huge because you know it, it's it's not about the you know, view. And, and in all honesty, from his perspective and not knowing what he was obviously he wasn't flying the smoke, and that was probably one of the first smartest things that you could do is not flying in the smoke. The second thing that you know he wasn't flying over people. You know he was staying basically out of the operation now. And the, the, the reason is, no, obviously probably would not happy. You probably would not have a helicopter or something like that coming or other other manned resource. But the fact is, he didn't know that, and that's where the hazard comes into comes into play. So that's why I, I kind of talked to him a, a little bit about saying you just don't know what resources are going to need, and if you decide to call in an aerial resource, now you're suddenly in the way. Right. And that's why you typically don't want to fly. But if you have an incident commander that you can say, hey, hey I got a drone, and they don't have one. And, you know, you can immediately show them, like, an image of, like, the 360. I don't know too many people that would probably say no. I'm sure there are some, but I just, you know, they have that perspective. And, you know, at least that incident commander knows what's going on. Yeah. Um, you know, there is something to say to the truth that, uh, you know, he doesn't have a whole lot of training. He, he doesn't understand how public safety works or what it would take to put out a fire or what hazards. But if he's staying out of the way... Like which you know he pretty much this guy pretty much is doing. It's safe. Uh, I, it's yeah. It's it's relatively um, it's relatively safe. I mean, there's always nothing's a hundred percent, but you know he's 98 percent there for sure. Um, and you can see they're still tackling this fire, but you can see they this boat that is closest to us. They haven't had the chance to put a whole lot of water in because they probably just can't see it's through it. the smoke. Right. And again, you could direct that fireboat's uh, line, and now it's just starting to hit. Um, that boat in. 
Um, and if this fire department had, you know, had a drone with them or yep. worked conjunction with, you know, they could be like, look, look, guys, we're totally missing that bolt right there with yep. that fire, you know. And, 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 and honestly, because obviously we don't know what they're doing, maybe they are aware of it because there right. are obviously firemen that are on the other side right. um, and aware of it. But, you know, for incident command to have this overall picture of what is going on, like these fires here, uh, they're, they're, you know, they have a pretty good knock on. They're not completely out, but they have a pretty good knock. And it just looks like the materials, I'm assuming, are a lot of plastics that are burning here. And that's why it's really, it's a little different than like a tire fire. You know, it's a petroleum-based totally. products. And they're, they're a pain to put out. And it's one of those things that the best you can do is try to get a knock and control the heat the best that you can. And they have to be loaded with fuel and just... Well, the, yeah, the fuel is, is, is another thing, too, because that tank ruptures and it also starts to spread across the water. You can have problems really, really quick. So whatever heat you can knock out, um, you can knock out. And, it's, and it may just very well be that they're just tackling what they can from the, from the direction that they can. Now as this video winds down, do you know what kind of drone was used? In this um, yeah, it was it was a simple little beep up uh, para drone. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I've they're, they're not a super popular um, manufacturer, but I mean, obviously, you know, the drone is it's uh, it's a pretty effective um, it's pretty effective for what for what this guy is doing. Sure. Um, and it just shows you don't need the most fanciest you don't, expensive equipment out there. You know, if this was at to night, get the job done. right? If this was at night, uh, this footage would be useless, right? Uh, because I would never fly a drone at night because I would not be able to see the, where the masts are, and Correct. that would be a, a, not proper lighting. Not not proper lighting, and you know, you could run into issues like uh, uh, crashing into one of the masts, and then you have other problems. Correct. So when it comes to the, it's not so much the drone itself and the capabilities of the drone. Um, that that matter much in this case. It's really the sensor is a big thing. Now, if this was a structure like a regular building, I would say definitely uh, object avoidance would be good. But because these are masts and they're small wires, object avoidance isn't going to see them, so it's not going to really do you much good, um, uh, much good at all. So, and that's the last thing you want to do is get tangled up in that. And... Well, you get t tangled up, and I mean the drone's coming down. Right. I mean, there's just there's no no left hands or butts about it. Now we can finally see they're starting to get some water on this other on this last boat here on the left hand side. Uh, it looks like they have two crews, um, uh, two crews on the dock. There's one that's kind of obscured by the uh, by the smoke, but I saw a little bit of a stream just kind of um, flashing over there. But again, you know th these guys that are over here towards the right. They can't really see works. I mean, I know I wouldn't be able to see it. I mean, I just no. see a thing of smoke and hope that someone can guide me and having this an aerial recon to say, guide, okay, now hold it right there, move up a little bit left, might actually have made this more efficient. Wow, Steve, that video was pretty, pretty intense. I mean, it definitely yeah. showed a lot of perspective. Definitely. Of, 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 what the advantage of having a drone and imagine instant command being able to watch that right. and being able to see how you know how his crews were effectively attacking the fire you know could there have been uh, better efficiencies maybe i mean obviously i mean it looked like everybody was being safe everybody had ppe on so right. and, and even just being from a safety officer standpoint you're just making sure your guys have ppe because you know sometimes you're on a call and some guys get like lazy or they they don't think about it right away right and all of a sudden, you know, they forget to put a mask on or they don't have a hood on or something like that. But you can see that and being able to see that as an incident commander or safety officer, or just, you know, just as a officer in general, uh, there's a whole lot of uh, whole lot of value there. So I think this was a great video. Yeah, very um, valuable, uh, especially for fire departments who have marinas yeah, um, and any fire department just to show the use of, of a drone and what they could, uh, their capabilities are yeah, at, on a fire ground. Absolutely. So uh, with that, I think we'll wrap up this episode. Well, thank you for having me again. Absolutely. You do realize you're going to be here like all the time. I know. You don't have to thank I should me. just stop saying should that, just right? stop thanking me. Just, <laughs> it's, it's all right, though. Um, so with that said, uh, this was Saving Lives of Drones, and my name was Keenan. My name's Steve. And that's it. That's a wrap. Awesome. All right. See you guys next time. All right. Bye.